just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. For my misery, always blaming someone else. I'm really into judgment and delay. But only hurting me and I and myself. Hi, everybody. It's Beyond the Body. Welcome. You notice I've got a new backdrop. You may have noticed. I should probably turn on some lights. Um, <laughs> this is all. This is all big experiment here for me. Um, We'll see how this goes. We're we're doing some new things. Some new things are coming through um, for all of us, and uh, so we're going to be doing some things differently. And one of them is our our LM virtual programming. Uh, up until this point in time, it's been live, and now we're switching to a, a recorded format. If that's what people are feeling, and I've been feeling this for quite some time, I would like to do a recorded program. I have inspiration that hits me all times of the day, and it ne doesn't necessarily fit into the format of doing a program, a live program just on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. So I have more flexibility now, so when the uh, inspiration hits, uh, I can just come into the halo room, which is where I'm at right now. I'm in the halo room. I may even just kind of switch this around if I can figure out how to do that. Yeah, here. This is the halo room. See, we have a guitar in the corner, and then we have some speakers, and there's a lot of seating. This is where a lot of our programs for the community happen. And it's a beautiful space. It's got lots of doors, all windows, and you can hear the birds, and I, I really like, like the halo room. So for right now, I'm getting an opportunity to do my program here quietly by myself with just you and me and you are just my mind so it's perfect. We did a an altar party the other day around the pool and unfortunately I filmed it but the sound I'm still learning new technical skills on a regular basis and uh, next time we do anything outside I'm going to use a little roving speaker rather than just relying on the one that's in my phone. And uh, it was a pool party was basically a pool altar party, and I had everyone put on their bathing suits, and we sat around and discussed those parts of the body that we have made wrong for a long time, and we were really willing to put them on the altar to see them differently, and that's the whole idea of doing anything, uh, putting things on the altar is that we are willing. We at least have a little bit of willingness to see something differently. And um, <laughs> I've spent my life making my body wrong, so I had quite a few things. But the biggest thing that's up for me at that party was I have just felt big my whole life. Even when I was, you know, <laughs> I'm not a small person. I was five shorter now, but I was 5'10 and 125 pounds after I got out of a refugee camp in, in Sudan for six months, and I still saw myself as overweight, too big, um, you know, and being a tall woman, uh, I have never been able to hide well, and so um, what I put on the altar for myself was, <sighs> I'm tired of feeling too big. I'm a beautiful expression of Christ mind, and can that be too big? So I put that on the altar, and a lot of people put many different things on the altar, from having too much body hair, to the nose isn't right, the lips aren't right, the breasts aren't right, the butt's not right, the legs aren't right. I mean, it was, it was a beautiful day um, to really see just how much this has affected our, our ideas about what the body should look like has affected all of us. And, uh, and if you know of somebody that has issues with their body, well, guess what? 
you're projecting them so you have probably <laughs> issues with your body too that you can't even equate with your body you have to project them on someone else so, so I would like to show you one segment a couple of shares from the altar pool party that we held here at La Casa um, an altar session is basically where we take those thoughts that are not making us joyous place them on the altar so that Holy Spirit can help us see them differently and um, this particular party was dealing with body thoughts so enjoy these shares we're here for a special altar session and I'm not sure if you're familiar with altar sessions but it's where you put something on the altar for Holy Spirit to help you see it differently and uh, as you probably already know today's program is about the body and those parts of our body that we use to shame ourselves and um, I'm just going to start off because I'm kind of this is my idea <laughs> and being raised by an anorexic mother in a family that was more concerned about weight and looks than anything else um, I knew my mother's waist size at age five, and I'm not sure why any child would know their mother's waist size, but I did. Um, out of that came a long life of dieting. I was a Weight, weight Watchers Lifetime member at age 13. Um, I have dropped 100 pounds at least three times in this lifetime. and. Uh, even at my lightest weight, which was in a refugee camp in Africa, I was overweight in my eyes. And uh, yeah, this is an altar session. And uh, when I was in hospice, I remember a conversation I had with my hospice nurse. And um, I said that I would rather die thin than live fat. And I was really frustrated that I get cancer and I put weight on, I don't lose weight. And that was a huge, huge frustration for me. So I know that I'm still harboring a lot of these thoughts. And uh, so to t start this program out, I'm putting that on the altar. I really want to see this one differently. I don't want to die suffering from body shame. I've given it enough of this lifetime. Um, so I'm putting that on the altar. Holy Spirit, I really want to see this differently. Thank you. So as long as I can remember, I've, I've had this consistent problem with my skin. And uh, I thought that was what I was going to be sharing about because it's just been probably one of the main reasons I'm involved in spirituality. Like initially there was just so much judgment around just like uh, a skin picking compulsively to the point where it would be like I'd go to school um, with like bleeding sores on my face and pretty much anywhere I could reach on my body. And um, I thought that was what I had to share about, but it's just, it's been washed so much. What I found in my mind that I'm actually more afraid to reveal is how vain I am. Like, I think I'm very beautiful and like have a young body and reasonably fit. And you know, there's things that I could pick apart really at any time, but that I use that for getting what I want. It actually feels like more uh, difficult to put on the altar than, oh, I do this to my body. It's like, that's an old story. This feels more ugly in a way that I use the beauty as a weapon, if that's even what it is, like that's what I see. Like I can use it to get attention from men I can use it to feel better than other women. I can use it to get what I want. It's a way of getting myself out of situations or, I don't know, it's just it's a tool, like a weapon. And uh, it was really good to expose that.
Kevin and Ralph. Yes. Do you like to see that differently? Yes. I think so. <laughs> yes. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's put it all in. <laughs> It's a fairly big topic, and that's why Beyond the Body is a program that I really feel very guided to continue doing in this new venue. So I hope you like it, and I really invite you um, to contact me and let me know of your ideas or um, if you're having a particular issue. Uh, we can be, I can be very open to discussing this on air, and I'll figure out how we can possibly hook you in to a video so that we can discuss it on air. Um, I'm definitely opening to just let's let's get this. And in the cor in a course in miracles, and Jesus even tells us the last form that we really have to make peace with is the body, because we think it's who we are. And I mean, this is the beautiful thing about a course in miracles. Um, every aspect of our lives can be handled miraculously if we are willing and uh, since I was you know given the diagnosis of cancer I've been having an opportunity to really look at this topic of body and what it means and I'm not in here I'm not in here that's one thing I've really really gotten very deeply it's like I live in mind and I, I share this little parable from Oh, this happened a year or two ago. I can't remember when. Um, it was with my friend James Nike. You out there, James? Hi, James. And uh, I was having some pain issues, and I was really going deep with the the, the whole topic of pain, uh, body pain. And uh, I don't know how, why I expressed it, but I, it came out in that conversation. I said that I know that I've lived many lifetimes before. I don't doubt that for a minute. Um, yeah, that's just, uh, call it a belief, call it whatever you will. I just know that I have lived lifetimes before. And with that, Jane said, and I'll never forget this, and it really was a critical turning point in looking at just about everything. He said then, if you know you've lived before, who died? Who died? And that's when I started to realize, I'm not in here. This is a tool, or as David says, it's a pencil. It's Holy Spirit's pencil, you know? And I've just made it so personal and such a, a, a belief in this is who I am. You know, I am this body. And the reality is, the thoughts that I'm currently thinking right here are not in here. And I just need to say this from a neurological standpoint. You know, I'm kind of drawn on some medical stuff here. But in neurology, they don't know where thoughts are. There is no scientific explanation for thoughts. There's a lot of people researching this, but there is no, they cannot locate a place in your brain where you're thinking. You know, they say, well, the prefrontal cortex is more thinking about the future and I mean they've got all these ideas of general areas of the brain where decisions are made but there's no scientific anything that says your thoughts are up here and with this with James Nike, Nike that I really got who did die if I remember living before and I do and I this is from an early age I was from Japan. I was I was in Hiroshima, <laughs> and I, I distinctly remember it. And it was the first time I think I had um, a past life experience when I went to Japan with a singing group when I was 16, and um, we went to Hiroshima. And I wasn't in anything spiritual at that point, um, and I had a flashback in Hiroshima, and I, I realized that. God, I was here and I jumped in the river. I rem you were passing this river and I saw myself jumping into this river to get away from the heat. So I know I have had past lives. And so this is um, really dealing with this who dies. And I know so many people are now looking at this topic of death is impossible. You know, we think of death as some end or final thing and the reality is we're not even in this form 
mind is 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 pulled into some outside space it's not in my head even I see it now as one mind, you know, or one ego mind. I mean, there you can choose from either. You can go to the ego mind or you can go to the healed mind. And it's like that's where these thoughts are formed and I think them. And then with repetitive nature of thinking, I start believing them and then they become set and then I have to work to release them as as a belief that doesn't serve me. <clears throat> so this body, the idea of this body being me, it's who I am, and this will end at some point in time and, you know, slip away and I'm dead. It, it's kind of a, a, a silly thought at this point. Um, I get I'm eternal in that respect. And this, is, this has been this inquiry. I'm grateful for cancer, quite frankly, that it, it has allowed me this exploration of form. Uh, to really go deep with it and see that, um, yeah, death is impossible. And, uh, you know, I, I don't need to know any more than that because that's the fear is of death. That was my biggest fear when the cancer hit me. It hit me. <laughs> it's like I went out in the middle of the street and cancer drove by and hit me. Um, when I projected cancer, it was... Um, the future kind of stopped. They didn't have to think about a future because everyone was saying, well, yeah, you're terminal, go into hospice. So that cut off the future. But what it did do to me, and I offer this to anyone else that's going through this, it threw me into my past. And then I started having regret for my past, which is really coming fast and furious. I didn't have to worry about the future, but I started digging around in the past, and that's not really helpful, just a hint to anyone else that's going through it. But what it did allow me to do is really see, okay, I'm happiest in this present moment, so let's work on that. And getting, gaining the skills to stay very present with what is, what am I thinking now? What am I thinking now? And through the Living Miracles community, God bless, this is amazing. We have expression sessions every day, and it's just like, what's looping? What do you need to put on the altar? What do you want to get rid of? And you can express anything and everything, and people do. This is the gift we give ourselves and others, is that we're honest. And it's not, it, it's not about anyone else. It's just our, our connection with God and what's blocking that connection to God, these thoughts are. And so it's clear them out and go more into your Christ mind, dip deeper into your Christ mind. And uh, so anyway, you know, as many of you may or may not know, <laughs> I was diagnosed with four stage uterine cancer about, God, it was 2009, so it was like eight years ago. And I was in hospice and I graduated hospice and there's been quite a few stories since then. But one of the things I've really been working on is going deeper with the decision to be sick. And uh, this is truly A Course in Miracles, um, to really look at everything that happens in our lives is something that we've called forth, <clears throat> that we're projecting in order that we can go deeper, that allows us to go deeper. So this has definitely been one of those journeys, and uh, I've learned so much about myself. And this program really is kind of being given birth out of a lot of those experiences. And one of the segments that I want to go into uh, starting with this program is body shaming. And uh, I have shamed my body um, this entire lifetime. And so <clears throat> probably lifetimes before, if the truth be known. Um, so I'm really wanting to kind of nip this in the butt, so to speak, and, and really um, get very clear on all of it. And one of the big areas that has come up for me is the amount of body shaming that I have done um, just with myself. You know, I've always thought I would be happier five pounds less. No matter how much I weighed, it was I would be happier if I were five pounds less. And that's just um, a diversion, a distraction technique to keep me from really staying in this moment and uh, being in the peace of God that I know I am. So.
so at this point and it's taken you know there's been some work that that has gone into this so I just want to say this is kind of the the beginning of um, a new way of being in this program and in this program beyond the body and in a course in miracles and I invite you to join me by sharing your ideas of areas that in, around your body that stop you, whether you find yourself sick or um, unhappy with some function in your body. Um, message, private message me on Facebook. I'm easy to find, Calico Hickey. Um, and <clears throat> if you feel like you would like to talk to me about it, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, and we can work something out, but just private message me and I'll definitely respond. Um, I know that I've talked to several people in our community here about being on future programs to discuss these things and I'm kind of excited about that. Um, I know I want a whole show on fear of fat uh, for, for I think that's a fairly major fear um, that is runs across the board. Um, Except in Kenya. When I was in Kenya, the women there would wear blankets on their the, their buttocks and they just couldn't have big enough buttocks. And I think, you know, all these things are changing. I was in the generation of Twiggy and uh, fairly anorexic frames and uh, my body was never anorexic looking. So I made myself wrong for that in so many ways and I would love to see this topic completely discussed thoroughly and uh, I want to use this format to do it because that is one of the biggest things that I see that led to me creating not creating but projecting cancer um, <clears throat> is that I have never liked myself and I'm learning to love myself now and that's it's a beautiful thing and it's it's a fairly interesting process and not all the, always easy and um, I invite you all to join me in the exploration of learning to love yourselves and the way we can do that is by seeing where we're critical of ourselves and how we make it wrong and want to change it and uh, I mean I, I've been on every diet on the planet you know I was on liquid protein diets, macrobiotics, vegan diets I've done all kinds of diets and I, I kind of um, with all these diets I have kind of smoke screened I have used many diets as a distraction and I've often called them not to change form because I didn't want to go to the truth of the matter, I used these diets as a way of being healthier or being more ecologically correct. Or um, I diverted the truth of why I was perhaps eating vegan or macrobiotic or, you know, the protein diet was just to get a handle on some issues and health issues and so I've used a diets and you know quite I was a chiropractor for 35 years and <clears throat> I, would, <laughs> I would give people diets for whatever they came in that they were concerned with I had a diet for no sugar diet you know no dairy diet no gluten diets macrobiotics kidney diets liver diets cleanses I had a whole armory <laughs> of diets. I was the diet queen and uh, I currently and I, I spoke this to a friend the other day I currently eat for joy. It's whatever makes me happy I go for and uh, the reality is it's a fairly joyous way of eating and yeah it's quite simple. Um, so I want to discuss that and one of these programs will be going into diets and looking at you know juicing and <clears throat> it's not whether you do a diet or not or eat a prescribed way or not it's more how are you holding it are you trying are you making your body wrong in some way 
Are you trying to fix your body in some way? Because that's where A Course in Miracles comes in. It's not in the doing, it's in how are you holding it? Are you making yourself wrong because you're too heavy and you want to lose weight? You're making yourself wrong because you're eating meat and you don't believe in hurting animals? So that's what we'll look at in the diet sec section. You know, Laverne Shepherd here in our community, I absolutely adore her. And we've talked about possibly getting together and doing a segment on fear of fat together because, you know, she has a lot of history with having that control her life as well. So we're, we're looking at a lot of different things here. Um, you know, there, we had a pool party the other day and that's what really sprang, and this whole new format kind of sprang from that. I'll be showing clips from that, but unfortunately the audio wasn't very good. And so this is kind of a test run to see if the audio works on this particular form of videoing, then I'll be able to join with others and we can discuss these ideas um, as they come up too. And I'm putting that out in my, our community here that if an issue with the body comes up to let's join let's let's join and do a program with it you know are you getting are you catching a cold let's talk about it you know let's let's look at this a little differently <clears throat> colds aren't just out there waiting to be caught <laughs> so it's going to be flipping everything about the body up on its head and i uh look forward to seeing where this goes because i really don't know i have some ideas that I've jotted down, but uh, like I said, I'm, I'm open to I'm an I'm open invitation for stuff that you might see coming up in your lives that you'd like to see discussed. Um, <clears throat> you know, let's talk about anorexia and bulimia um, from this new perspective, not as there's something wrong, but the correction is not in the doing, the correction is in the mind. And uh, so I, I, I look forward to seeing what comes out of all this. So that brings us to an end of another Beyond the Body segment. Um, I just want to close with this and just to let you know there's a special treat after this um, because our pool party ended with all of us going in the pool and I just put some music to and wanted to share that with you. But for right now, let's just read this part of the text in chapter 19. The body does appear to be the symbol of sin while you believe that it can get you what you want. While you believe that it can give you pleasure, you will also believe that it can bring you pain. To think you could be satisfied and happy with so little is to hurt yourself. And to limit the happiness that you would have calls upon pain to fill your meager store and make your life complete. This completion, this is completion as the ego sees it. Communion is another kind of completion, which goes beyond guilt because it goes beyond the body. So I hope that all of you join us and jump in with both feet. Have a great moment. Just a little runaway Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run Afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay Spending days in a nightmare This is Beyond the Body from La Casa de Milagros! Woo! Woo! It was just a tiny mad idea At which the Son of God remained